Hi everyone, it's Tara Stewart with Solid Serenity Legal Solutions. And today I want to talk to you about five steps to probate an estate in Oklahoma. So unfortunately, I know there's been a lot going on this year and it's led to losing some people that we shouldn't have. Um, so it's hard, it's a hard time for everyone right now. So this is just a way to kind of walk you through what the probate process might look like. So let's start with what is probate. So probate is if someone passes away and their items are in their name. So it can be real estate, it can be personal assets. And we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. But basically we have to transfer that asset to the surviving heirs. So probate is a process that takes those assets through court to make that happen. It's kind of a long, arduous process, can be. Um, and the less that a family gets along, the harder that it can be. So if you have to go through it, just be prepared that it takes some time and it takes some stress. So why do I know this? Who am I? Why do you care what I have to say? So I'm Sarah Stewart. I've been an attorney, hard to believe, but 11 years now. I've spent a lot of that time doing estate planning. So wills, trusts, trying to avoid what we're gonna talk about today for families and doing probates. I would say probably 80% of my practice is made up of probates on a usual year. This year is a little different because we've had some people trying to come in and prevent that for their families. So estate planning is probably bigger for me this year. And then I also help with adult guardianship. So that's when grandma or grandpa or mom or dad aren't able to take care of things for themselves. And so we have to have somebody appointed to help them with that. So that's my practice. Again, I've been doing this for about 11 years. I'm from Oklahoma, Oklahoma City to be exact, and I am a single mom to two young boys who keep my hands pretty full. Um, but having become a mom, you know, families have become really important to me in my practice. And so what I like to offer is a personal touch and also flat fees so that people know what they're paying because I personally, would prefer that um, if somebody were representing me. So we keep a connection and a relationship with our clients. We want you to know you can call us anytime to help you find referrals or whatever it may be and the clock's not ticking. So that's who I am. That's why I know about probate. And now I'm gonna tell you the five steps to probate an estate in Oklahoma. So the very first step, and I think the most important, is take some time to grieve. There's a lot of stress with losing a loved one, and we need to be aware of our own anxiety and our own grief and be able to handle that a little bit before we move forward. Some people are kind of gung-ho and they just want to keep going and that's how they grieve. Other people, that's not okay. They need that time and they need some downtime. So take what you need, take care of yourself and take care of your family before you start planning and thinking about whether you need a probate. Now that being said, if it's a spouse or someone who helped contribute to the household, don't wait too long because this process does take time. And so if you need to pay bills or you need to make you know, mortgage payments, electricity payments, and somebody else's income that has passed away helped you do that, then you want to get access to that as quickly as you can. Okay, so it's my only caveat, but definitely take care of yourself, take some self care, take some time. Then our second step is to figure out what the decedent had. Okay, so what we mean by that is what were the assets that the person who passed away had? Did they own a house? Did they have a bank account? And if this isn't someone you live with, it can be hard sometimes to gather this information. So we need to look at mail. If we have access to the house, we need to look at if there's any bills coming in. 
if there are any statements coming in, retirement account statements, bank account statements. And we also need to look around. Um, hopefully there was a plan in place and you know where to find some of these important documents, but that's not often the case. So if you don't know, look in places where you would think someone might keep something important. If they had a, a file cabinet or a desk that they kept documents in, you need to start looking through that and figuring out what was there. Because knowing what was there is really important to completing the probate, number one, and also in determining what kind of probate you need. Because there are different options in the state of Oklahoma, and some of those options cost a little bit more than others. But we want to make sure that we are doing it right so that you don't have to come back later and fix something. So make sure that you look through documents and find what the decedent had, including what bills they have. Okay, so we just want to start organizing, essentially. Then once we know that, once we know what they had, we have to decide what the ownership is of those assets. Okay, so there's a reason for this. There are certain assets that don't have to go through probate. So those assets are jointly owned with the right of survivorship. So let's say that I'm married, I own a home, and I own it with my husband as joint tenant with right of survivorship. If my husband survives me, if I pass away, then that property goes entirely to him. He does not need to go through probate. But the language is very important. You need to make sure that it says joint tenants with right of survivorship. It's a little different with bank accounts. There is a presumption in Oklahoma that if there is a bank account or savings account or credit union account that is owned jointly, that those proceeds and that asset are going to go automatically to the joint owner when someone passes away. Now, of course, if there was joint ownership and both of the parties have passed away and there's not something else there, it will have to go through probate to go to the next heir in line. Another type of asset that passes outside of probate, so you don't have to go to court and start this whole long process, is if somebody is named a beneficiary. So there's a couple ways to do that. You might see um, retirement accounts that it's direct beneficiary, okay? So it may say beneficiaries are A or B or A and B, whatever. As long as the beneficiaries are alive, that asset will not need to go through the probate process, okay? Another way that that might happen is a bank account can have a payable on death beneficiary. And so in that case, again, as long as the beneficiary is alive, then it will not go through probate. And then the last situation is if the asset is owned in a trust. So it actually has to have the trust as the owner. It can't just be grandma had a trust, but the property is still in grandma's name. That's going to have to go through probate. But if the property was properly transferred, entitled into the trust, then it will not have to go through probate. It will follow the directions of the trust. So you need to find out what these assets are, number one, that the person who passed away has. Then you need to find out how they're owned to determine if you have to go to court to probate the asset. Okay, so those are our first two steps after, of course, taking care of ourselves and grieving. So first three steps. Now, our fourth step is we need to decide how much money these assets are worth, okay? So, for instance, let's say you have some real estate in Oklahoma County. The county assessor can be a good start for determining the value of that property if you don't know. Um, of course, bank accounts, other assets, they probably won't speak to you directly, but you can get an idea from statements like we talked about, going through the mail, seeing what they have. And 
really when we talk about the value, we're talking more about the assets we talked about that are not jointly owned, that are not beneficiary named, and that are not owned by the trust because we're talking about only the assets that would have to go through probate. And the reason that we wanna know the value of those is because we have different options available based on the value of that estate, okay? So for instance, if you only have $50,000 throughout the state of Oklahoma, there's a certain way you can avoid probate by having an affidavit that all the heirs sign, okay? So that's an option that might be available. Now this does not apply to real estate. We're talking about personal assets. So we're talking about bank accounts, sometimes life insurance policies. I've done them for that before, but we're talking about a smaller estate, okay? Under 50,000, you can use an affidavit of tangible personal property. Then the next step is if you have up to 200,000, then there's a, a shorter process you can go through. There's some other reasons you could use that process too. So it's a really good idea to speak to an attorney at least about what your options are. And often they can help you with that in a, a short phone call. And we offer free 15 minute consultations to just kind of walk through that and see what that looks like for you. Then the next step is anything over 200,000. That is a traditional regular probate. It takes longer, it costs more money. So you wanna know the value of the assets so that you can determine what options you have and what route you need to go. Now, I will also mention if there's real estate that needs to be sold in the probate. So you will usually, you can often go ahead and finish the probate as long as the heirs get along and there's not a lot of them, and then they can sell the property if they wanna do that. But there are times when you can't do that. So let's say, a lot of the heirs live out of state or somebody refuses to agree to sell the property or there's some other dispute taking place, you might have to sell that property through probate. And if you do so, you'll have to use the traditional probate. So it will cost a little bit more and that process is a long process and it takes a lot of court hearings and notices. So it will cost more as well, but just something to be aware of as you're kind of thinking through this process and knowing what you need to do. So we've done steps one through four. We've taken care of ourselves. We've decided um, what the decedent had. We've decided how it was owned and we've decided the value of it. So once we know all of that, we start the process, which is step five. And that process could be, again, if the assets are personal, and under $50,000 could be an affidavit. Pretty simple, pretty easy. If it is an asset that's under $150,000, it could be a shorter process for probate. And if it's you know another asset that's over $200,000, then we're looking at the longer, more complicated, more complex, more costly version of probate. So then you have to start that process, right? You can do that by yourself. I don't recommend it just because there are a lot of deadlines that are required by statute. There are a lot of rules you have to follow. You can try it, um, but if not, do be aware that usually attorney fees come off the top of the estate. So if you do decide to hire an attorney, then just know that that would be deducted from the top of the estate. So let's say there's 75,000 in the estate you get an attorney, the fees are 5,000, then the 70,000 would then be processed to be distributed to the heirs. So just so you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're coming out of pocket unless that money is not in the estate. And it often means you can be reimbursed as personal representative. So if you have any questions, I definitely want you to reach out to me. That's what we're here for. You can always give me a call. Again, my name is Sarah Stewart, 405-548-5763. Or you can go to our website and book online, which is so easy. And that's www.solidserenity, all one word, dot com, backslash book, dash, 
online. And you can just find a time to chat with me and I can answer any questions that you have for a 15 minute free phone consultation. And I hope that this was helpful for you today. And again, if you have any questions, please just feel free to let me know. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye. Have a wonderful day.